So before I buy anything, I tend to do a lot of research. I try to find something that may be a better alternative or find a reason not to buy something before I buy it. This is particularly true for me with more expensive equipment, whether that's guitars, amps, pedals, recording equipment, camera gear, anything like that. I like to have the full story before I go and spend hard-earned money on it. I don't want to just buy it and then hate it and then return it or sell it and lose money on it. So a couple years ago, really about two and a half years ago, I decided I wanted to buy a mono flyby. So kind of the last place I went was YouTube to see if I could find any long-term reviews and I couldn't. So I hope this helps you to see my thoughts as a long-term user. It's been about two and a half years now that I've owned this bag. I've traveled with it a lot. I've flown with it. I've used it. Tried not to abuse it, but sometimes that's how it goes. So I hope this helps you make a decision whether or not this is the bag for you. So the first thing that should be said is that Mono Creators makes great products. All of their gig bags and everything that I've experienced has been a great well-made equipment case for the most part. Now they also do pedal boards and different things like that now, but a few years ago they were pretty much just making bags. So this bag in particular is a pretty robust backpack. It's not small, it's not the largest bag, but as you can see, it's pretty deep. It's a pretty hefty bag, and frankly, I like that. I fit a lot of stuff in my backpack. Um, it wears really well, even under heavy load, which I really like. You saw the bag dump at the beginning of the video, and while sometimes I will have it loaded with about that much stuff, sometimes there's honestly even more. If I'm doing a weekend trip or something like that, even if I'm not playing music or requiring uh, any music equipment, I'll take this and my Pelican 1510 as my carry-on, and that's honestly all I need for three, four days out, even with clothes and everything. So this bag gets loaded down. So a lot of times I've even got an audio interface in here, a 15 inch MacBook, which re would require even more cables. Sometimes I'll throw like an SM57 in one of the side pockets, just so I can have a recording rig on the road if I need it or want to do some demos while I have some downtime. So this bag has handled that really well. It has these straps on the side which help you kind of keep everything nice and tight and compressed when you need to. Or honestly, I've used this to hook on tripods or mic stands when I'm loading out of the back of my car and all kinds of stuff. Another thing that I really like about it, which I'm sure you've probably seen, is it has this nice little loop here. And that's where I keep a cable pretty much at all times. I'll keep a uh, spare cable or charger or sometimes mixing headphones in this compartment and that just helps keep them nice and high they're not falling down in the bag and getting crushed or anything like that which is really helpful this bag also has plenty of compartments without kind of giving you pocket paralysis i find i hate bags that have just a million pockets everywhere because then you end up not using half of them or you forget which pocket you put something in and it just gets really annoying this one's really thoughtfully designed, has plenty of pockets for organization while still being pretty minimal. Some of my favorite pockets, I would say my favorite pockets on this bag are these reverse engineered side pockets. So by reverse engineer, I really just mean reverse access. So it doesn't have a zipper here on the front or anything on the side, but when you flip it around, it has this nice zipper on the back to be able to store things. I find this really helpful when traveling, especially going through an airport and you've got your passport on you, maybe your keys that you don't need because your car's parked or someone dropped you off or whatever it may be, but you still wanna be able to access it quickly. Those pockets are really easy to get into. Usually I'll also keep like a flashlight or something. So if I'm carrying gear and I can't see and maybe I don't wanna to get to my phone and I just wanna get a flashlight out, I'll grab that and just be able to quickly access it, which is really helpful. Another thing it has on the side of the bag, you'll notice, are these little metal uh, hook points, basically. So this bag comes with a shoulder strap. I'm gonna be honest, I think I threw it away just a few months after getting this bag because frankly, this bag is a bit too big to really just wear over your shoulder, like a satchel or something. It's pretty bulky, especially the way I carry it. So that wasn't particularly helpful for me at all. So I got rid of that, but 
it is really useful if you've got a water bottle or something or even just something that attaches with a carabiner or that you can attach a carabiner to. I find that really helpful to hook on here. The reason I like doing it with a water bottle is frankly, I don't want a water bottle in my backpack with my MacBook Pro and my Apollo Twin and a bunch of other music equipment that even if the water bottle leaks just a little bit, could easily ruin. So I like having that. Another favorite feature of this bag is it's really two bags in one. Having the detachable laptop bag is often really helpful for me. I like being able to just leave this in the hotel room or wherever, leave that section off and take this laptop portion with me. If I'm just running around town or I'm on the road and we've got a day off, it's easy to be able to take this and have my laptop and a notebook and a book and a couple pens or something like that into a coffee shop and not have to carry around the weight of that backpack. I also really like it if I'm just running around town or maybe doing a lot of walking if I'm in a city where I don't have a car that I've flown to and so that is also very helpful. It's not hard to reattach it. All you have to do is go back through the same zipper that you unzipped to take it off. You reattach it. Now watch this take me longer because I'm being filmed. Cue Jeopardy music. Just kidding. We're good. So, that's really helpful. Uh, that's one of my favorite features of the bag. Another great thing is on the back, you'll notice it has these really thick padded pieces. You can't hardly see it because it's the same color, but these are about an inch thick. Um, maybe just under an inch. But this makes the bag really comfortable even when I've got it loaded down. Again, 30, 40 pounds is not uncommon. So when I've got that, it's still really comfortable for me to wear. It's got all these hooks and loops on the front, so it's easy to just clip your sunglasses or something like that on if you're into that. And frankly, it's just a really great bag. Uh, this has held up really well. One of my favorite things about it is, as you can see, it stands up on its own. So I don't have to worry about it slumping over and being in a coffee shop and someone coming by and stepping on my bag because it's just fallen and is completely devoid of form or shape, um, which is really nice to not have to worry about. Now you'll see, even though I've had this for about two and a half years now, it starts to slump a little bit, but it still stands up, which is more than I can say for any other backpack that I've owned, which is really nice to not have to worry about. That's one of my favorite things about the bag. Now here's the thing, this is not a cheap bag. Mono does not make cheap products. Mono makes stuff that is built to last, it's all designed in California. Uh, they're a great company, I met the guys at NAMM a few years ago, and even before I owned this bag, they were super courteous, very kind, very helpful when I asked them and bugged them about this bag because I saw so many people at Summer NAMM in Nashville wearing it I was just infatuated with I was like, why are so many people carrying the same backpack? There must be something to it. And I believe that there is. But again, this isn't a cheap bag. This bag is $229 upon the filming of this video. And that's not including tax or shipping or anything like that, which is a lot of money for a backpack. I mean, you could easily go and spend 30 bucks on a backpack and have $200 to spend on gear, whether that's a new pedal or a new microphone or whatever it may be. But that all said, I think the price over time kind of breaks down and makes it worth it. Previously to this, I probably had a backpack for the longest once I started seriously carrying them and carrying music gear in them for maybe two years. And at that point, they're getting dirty and nasty and kind of falling apart or maybe some of the padding starting to tear or on my previous bag, the strap actually started to tear off of it because I was putting so much strain on it. And I haven't had that problem with this bag at all. It's super sturdy. The bottom's this really thick rubber type material uh, which is common for a lot of their bags and cases and frankly this has been the best pack pack I've ever owned even if I wasn't a musician this is something that has been a worthy investment sheerly because of the quality again $229 is a pretty hard pill to swallow but if everything about this bag speaks to you maybe you think it would be a good investment for you I'd encourage you to just save up the money um, $229 isn't cheap, but again, if you're talking about protecting a laptop and maybe a small MIDI controller and an interface or microphone or something like that, then all of a sudden the $229 pales in comparison to the expense of a lot of those things. 
Another con, again, small con here, small critique, is that it does lose shape over time. As you can see, mine slumps forward like I mentioned, and part of that is these little side parts here, you can see this is a somewhat rigid uh, frame basically around the bottom of it, and they kind of start to tuck in and lose shape. Now also, because of the way the zipper is designed on the bottom of the laptop compartment, you can see that that portion is lower and sits lower than this part, which also leads to the leaning. So, not a big deal. I wouldn't say a design flaw, but something maybe for Mono to consider revising in the future, making it to where the laptop doesn't sit so low, so it will sit up better over time. But these are all small things. It's still the best bag I've ever owned. I still believe it's worth every penny of $229, even though that will turn some people off to it. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you want to see me do a full bag loadout of what I carry when I'm traveling and playing music, let me know in the comments below. And let me know, are you going to buy a mono flyby or is it maybe just too rich for your taste? Hope you guys have a good one. See you in the next one.